Hello, everyone. This is Angela Jo Maniri, and welcome to the Think Your Way into Success webinar today. I'm just listening to thunder by Imagine Dragons as I begin to share. So uh, I figured I'd leave it on for just a, a second or two because this is my one of my power songs that I love to get my mind set into a great place. So I encourage you to pick one too, or you can borrow this one. Okay, well, thank you all for joining me here this afternoon, uh, this very, very special week, and hopefully uh, spring is really here this time. So again, I wanna welcome you. My name is Angela Jo Maniri, and I just thank you for investing your time with me today. Time is just so important and, and so precious these days, even more than ever. So my hope is that you will glean, um, you know, just a few nuggets for today, you know, from the webinar today that will help you think your way into even greater success. So think your way into success. What does the think mean? Well, I love acronyms. I don't know about you, but I definitely do. And hopefully, there we go. Love when technology works too. So the um, THINK stands for train your brain, hone your habits, inspect your intentions, negate the negatives, and know your why. So we're gonna jump right in on train your brain. And if you think about it, when it's, you know, when it comes to your brain, it's just so amazing to think that everything we say and do begins with our thought life. And our brain is so powerful beyond measure. And our thoughts dictate how we feel and how we behave. Did you realize that it's scientifically proven that you can train and rewire your brain to think differently? How cool is that? I mean, you're in the driver's seat. That's very, very exciting. So I want you to um, consider this, you know, how powerful our thoughts are. And our thoughts actually influence our words. They impact, our words then impact our actions. Our actions, think about the things that we do, develop into our habits, which define our character, and then ultimately our destiny. And again, it all begins with our thoughts. And in other words, a, a way that I've heard it been said before is where the mind goes, the man or woman follows. And the coolest thing is that we have the power, we have the insight and the control of what our thought life is about. So just on a personal note, I, over the past few years, I've been really looking into about your brain and training the brain and just researching and studying more, you know, about the power of our brain. And it's been somewhat top of mind, pun intended, as um, about four years ago, I was affected rather pretty intensely um, uh, as a result of a concussion, a serious concussion, which started as swelling of the brain and then it was not treated properly and it turned into, unfortunately, fluid on the brain and then a few months later, in, it resulted in atrophy, which is a whole nother subject for another time. So needless to say, this is quite personal. I'm even more passionate now than ever than before about this topic. So I want you to think about your conversations that you have throughout the day. Who are they mostly with? Yourself, right? And even though you may have children, a significant other, co-workers or associates, you know, or a boss you report to, or maybe a staff that reports to you, the majority of our conversations are in our own head. And what we say, think, and do affects us more than what others say, think, and do. So that's really important and very, very powerful. Because those conversations with ourselves have a direct impact on how we feel and behave. And get this, I'm gonna see how many of you know the answer to this. I'll give you a couple seconds here. How many thoughts do you think we have in one, <clears throat> excuse me, in one day? How many thoughts in one day? 
Any guesses? I'm looking at the uh, conversations chat here. Oh, Donna, you are brilliant. So true. Almost 70,000 thoughts hit the mind of an average human every day. Good job, Donna. Isn't that crazy? And a lot of those thoughts are very useful and vital for our lives and the work we do, such as planning, organizing, you know, reflecting, making decisions, and just day-to-day -day activities. However, a lot of time can also be spent on unhealthy thoughts, those that are not productive, self-defeating, discouraging thoughts of like worry and why me, um, you know, that type of mentality. So let's look at unhealthy versus healthy thoughts. What's the difference here? So for example, if our thoughts are unhealthy, they may be filled with self-doubt and negativity and unworthiness and that why me mentality. And there's a struggle to really, you know, get in and reach our goals and, you know, stay on our path. However, on the flip side, when we have intentionally make healthy decisions, we can have a can-do attitude in spite of the circumstances we are in the midst of. And we can have an attitude of determination, of confidence, and worthiness arises, which really makes us unstoppable. And isn't that what it's all about? So the bottom line is, you are in charge and that's the the greatest thing of all because when a thought appears it's up to you it's up to each of us to examine it and ask ourselves you know does this thought serve me or does it hinder me from moving forward and becoming the best version of me does it promote a healthy outcome if not then change your thought right because who's in charge oh yeah I am, that's right, we have to remind ourselves of this. So training your brain to think differently physically changes your brain. I'm gonna say that again. Training your brain to think differently physically changes your brain. Think about it, our brain is a muscle, right? So you work out your other muscles, or maybe if you're a little bit like me, you intend to, but now I'm getting better at it, by going to the gym or for a walk or ride on a bike or whatever your mode of exercise is. So why would we not consider training one of the most important parts of our body, our brain? It could help us with any of the following. Training our brain could help us avoid those embarrassments, the embarrassing moments of forgetting someone's name ever. Does that ever happen to you? Or how about remembering important dates and numbers? And how about being able to learn more effectively to keep that focus and to be able to process quicker? And most importantly, by strengthening our brain, we can avoid being subject to diseases. So that is so important because there's so many things that are a result of, you know, our, our brain not being strong. And that is why it is so important to train your brain to think, to act, and to be the best that you can be. So it's a little bit about why train your brain. And now we're going to move on to hone your habits. So habits are key in creating our success. Don't you agree? Uh, I remember my mom used to say, your habits will make or break you. And that is so true. And there's so many books out there that are very helpful on habits, like Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And, um, you know, uh, Brendan Burchard just came out with a new one, too. And there's so many things about why su successful people behave the way they do. There's habits that run through um, that will actually make us better and more successful. So if you think about it, there's healthy habits that we do instinctively, like brush our teeth. You know, nobody at our age should be telling us to brush our teeth or take care of our personal hygiene. Then there are other habits that may take more time to develop, like what I referenced earlier, working out regularly or creating proper eating habits. Um, scheduling time to refuel your emotional tank. I know we're starting, I'm claiming it or sharing it publicly here. My husband and I are starting on Monday um, the 
Whole30 um, plan. So we're really excited that about creating proper eating habits. So, you know, these habits that anything you want to um, put into your lifestyle require more intentional thinking, which we're going to talk about on the next letter, the I, intention, and planning as well. So here's a question for you again. So I'm going to see how many people know this one. How many days do you think it takes to create a habit, to actually make it or break a habit? I'll give you a couple seconds here while I take a sip of water. Okay, a couple answers here. And Aaron, yes, you are right. 21 days. 21 days to either make a habit, a new habit, or get rid of an old one. And it takes the 21 days to actually set it into place, to execute it, and then to commit to the task at hand, whatever it is. So starting each day with effective habits is the secret sauce for, of successful people. And it actually even begins prior to waking up in the morning. Again, I'm going to ask another question. I'd love to involve you. Um, how many of you have ever heard of and know what the acronym LIFO stands for. L-I-F-O, LIFO. Okay, see if anybody gets this one. All right, Linda, good job. You, I think you might've heard this one before, right? It stands for last in, first out. So exactly like our thoughts at night, exactly whatever we're thinking of, and our, our thoughts will be the first ones we wake up with. So whatever we're thinking at night, the night before, when we lay our heads on the pillow, that will be our first awakening thought that we have. So I challenge you to think about that tonight when you're going to bed. What is that last thought? And I guarantee you will wake up with that thought in your mind. So try it out. And remember, last in, first out. Now, one of my favorite quotes is by Jim Rohn on habits, and he says, motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. And that is so true because we can get motivated so easily when something's new and exciting, but then, you know, if it's not going the way we want or it's not getting the results we want, you know, it's the habit of doing it over and over again that keeps us going. So what are some of the habits that you can imp implement daily that can add to your success formula? These are some success habits that you know, I have implemented and I have heard from other speakers and authors before. And I know you probably heard this one from Stephen Covey. And this is one of my favorites that is, I probably learned this in my early 20s and I've always held this dear to my heart. And I would even share this with my boys growing up. Begin with the end in mind. To think about the possible outcome of your decision, okay? Usually this is for setting goals and thinking about what we're doing, but also if we're thinking about doing something that we're unsure of, what could that possible outcome be as well? So with every decision we make, each habit we create, how will this serve me and how will it serve others as well? And, you know, Thinking about that at night, like we just talked about with life, though, writing down the five things you want to accomplish for the next day is a great habit to get into as well. And it frees up your mind so you can rest at night and it's a great focus to have for the next day. So begin with the end in mind. Number two, rest. Rest is a part of the word restore. Hmm, might be telling us something, little play on words there, right? Well, this is a biggie. And it's not trying to do more and get it all done, working crazily through the wee hours of the night as we peer through half-opened eyes. Can anybody relate to that? You know, getting rest, it's making the decision and it's creating that habit to give ourselves a gift. Yes, it's a gift to restore ourselves, our mind, our body, our spirit, so we can be fresh and start each day with energy. Number three, put first things first. For me, when I wake up after my bulletproof cup of yummy coffee in, in the morning, I start my day grounding myself in positive words and truth. 
and for me, it's from the Bible. I read either devotionals and then sometimes journal, or maybe I listen to worship music or a teaching or something uplifting. Because when we get our minds set first thing in the morning, it's a great foundation for our day to go in a positive direction. And of course, it's not the solution, but it really helps us get started right. And as a man or woman thinketh, so he or she is. So another gift or a habit that I like to say that I give myself is uh, to strengthen our bodies, okay? And I'm using the word strengthen because a body in motion stays in motion. We've heard that before. And I'm kind of like psyching myself out here. Instead of saying I have to exercise, I'm saying that I need to strengthen my body because I want to be strong. And whatever it is I can do to get that result, whether it's going to the gym or walking or eating clean, makes me want to choose it versus having to do it. Make sense? Okay, number five, creating boundaries regarding technology. Whew. Electronics are a blessing, yet they can also be a time zapper. One thing that I have found that works is keeping my phone on silent while I am working on a project. Step away. Or if it doesn't work that well, put it away. <laughs> put it somewhere where you can't see it because then you won't be, you know, going to it and checking messages or emails. So the same with emails themselves, checking them two to three times a day, say once in the morning, maybe at noon and at the end of the day. For most people, that's effective and sufficient because you don't need to have to respond every second. Creating boundaries that help us perform at our peak times is key also. Another habit is allowing buffer time. I know um, I'm really focusing a lot on this now, trying to be earlier and allowing time for emergencies or traffic or whatever that is. So put that into your schedule is a great habit to get into. And this is big, scheduling tasks versus creating a to-do list. You know, you can start out with the to-do list just as a mind dump, but then to actually put those things into your calendar, say at four o'clock, I'm going to make these calls or I'm going to do this versus just creating that list and feeling overwhelmed that you got to check it all off. Having it actually scheduled will help. So those are a few things for honing your habits. And now we're going to talk about inspecting your intentions. Our intentions, our intention creates our reality. I love that quote by Wayne Dyer. He's another one of my favorites. So what does the word intention mean? Intention as a noun um, is an anticipated outcome that is intended or that guides your planned actions. It's your aim, your design, or your purpose. You think about it, the intention is the heart of creating authentic power. So success or failure is proportionate to intention. Hmm. Stay on that one for a second. Success or failure is proportionate to intention. If your intention is love, so to say, let's just use that one, and you come from a place of love, you will be successful in any situation or undertaking, no matter what it is, because you're, you're being sincere and genuine and authentic coming from that, that place of love or, and servant mentality. So this is because there's an invisible force, a vibration, a higher power for me, it's God, and that source that carries your intention will come across to whoever and whatever you're doing. So when you do something, whether it's writing a book, spearheading a project, going on a diet, helping your children you know, after school with their homework, whatever it is, your actions and your words will not be well received if you hold the feeling that you are doing it because you have to. So setting that intention is so important. The outcome of everything you say and do depends on your approach. Are you approaching the task from a place of love or are you coming from a place of fear and obligation or resentment? So that's why, which leads me to one of the things I am so passionate about, and that is the power of I am and affirmations. 
And that's what my book, Your I Am Wake Up Call, is all about. It's identifying who we are and defining our ourselves according to whose we are. And these two little words are so powerful because what comes after them truly does tell you, you know, who you are and it shapes your reality and it, it does define your intention. So for example, think about this. Say right now to yourself, I am love. Okay, I am love. When you say it, you begin to own it and experience it. So imagine every day starting the day with I am uh, intentions that are I am hope, I am joy, I am love, I am gratitude, whatever they may be for you to, you know, to start your day with that. So you begin to, you know, come from that place in everything you do and share with others. Because on the flip side, when you're coming from a place of fear or desperation or worry, that will be evident as well. And also, it attracts more of that same energy. So how, when we're looking at goals versus intention, what is the difference there? Well, entrepreneurs understand, typically entrepreneurs, um, since probably most of you are on this uh, webinar, understand the value and necessity of setting goals, as well as you know other people that are working full-time for um, themselves as well. But I wonder how many set intentions. So what's the difference? So goal setting helps us to understand what we want and how to get there. Then we create a plan and stay on track to get it done. And that sounds wonderful, but for some, there is a downside to goal setting because it takes us out of the moment and creates an emphasis on what we don't have. For those who set goals, and I hear this all the time, sometimes they fail to achieve them because they don't even wanna set them because they're afraid of failure. So that can lead to more of a sense of, you know, not being motivated. However, intention helps us to focus more on the why behind the what. And setting and living your intention allows you to focus on who you are in the moment, to recognize and live your values, and to raise your emotional energy, which in turn raises your physical energy. So daily intentions can help you do just that. And they also provide kind of like a roadmap and reminder for how to live out each day. So in inspecting those intentions gives you purpose as well as the inspiration and motivation to achieve your purpose. So make sure you inspect those intentions and to see that they're aligned with who you are and where you want to go. Begin each day by setting the intention for the day. For example, say, you know, I want to make three people smile or I want to finish writing my outline for my book or whatever those decisions are to help you get closer to that specific goal. Whatever it is for you, setting that intention is the first step in manifesting it. Okay, the N, negate the negatives. Oh my goodness, how many, have we, how many of us have these negative thoughts that pop into our head? Well, this quote I love, when you get rid of your negative thoughts, positive things will start to happen. Very simple, right? Why don't we do it all the time? Okay, so with this topic, I think it's first important to remember this. What we focus on grows, or what we feed grows. So we want to make sure we recognize the negatives, yet we don't spend time dwelling on what is holding us back. And that's where that balance comes into play. For instance, sometimes we focus on losing weight, right? Versus making healthy choices, healthy eating choices and eating habits. So if we focus on making right choices, then the weight will more than likely come off. Yet focusing on the losing aspect actually can set us up for failure. So here's an acronym I use, which is very, very simple. It's the word RID. If it stands for recognize, inspect, and delete. So ask yourself, is this thought moving me towards my goal, towards being a better person and serving others? If yes, continue. If not, you're inspecting it, and if it doesn't, press the delete button and let it go, okay? So RID, recognize, inspect, and delete. So actually, negating the negatives really translates into pursuing the positives. 
So, but it fit better into the think formula, negating the negative. So when you're negating those negatives, you're actually substituting them and pursuing the positive. You're focusing more on thinking on purpose because what we think about, we ultimately bring about. Our attitudes in the circumstances will determine the outcome. For example, if something happens, instead of thinking about the worst case scenario, how about thinking, and this too shall pass? There are five little words that make a huge difference. And finding that joy in all the circumstances. And it's hard to do because when we're in the middle of a storm and it's difficult to choose peace or to choose joy, but it's refreshing to our souls. And just think of how we feel when we make that choice because our soul is composed of our mind, our will, and our emotions. So when we make the joy, the decision to choose joy or positivity, it's music to, you know, to ourselves as well as to God's ears when we do. And remember, we are in charge of how we respond and react, right? We're in the driver's seat. So here's a few suggestions when it comes to negating the negatives, or better yet, pursuing the positives. To set our minds and keep them set on what is above. Take the higher road and really think about, you know, setting our minds just above everything else and keeping it there, protecting that our minds as well. Getting rid of anger, resentment, and what ifs, using that grid formula, recognize, inspect, and delete, because none of those things serve us. Being right is so highly overrated, isn't it? I mean, you know, I know when we have things that we want to say or we're passionate about, you know, we can voice our opinion, which is great, but to listen to other people with empathy to understand what theirs is, is so much better. And it's so much purposeful and so much more intentional. And then filling our minds with positive teaching. That is so important. Like I said, for each day, going back to the habits, you know, filling our minds and starting each day like that and getting dressed for success each day as well. Putting on positive attributes like kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So when it comes to negating the negatives, it's important to not only clothe ourselves in positiveness, but also it's important to recognize the people around us as well as what we open ourselves up to. Imagine creating an invisible bubble around you, and it's your personal zone of positivity. And anyone who does not align with your thinking is not permitted in the circle. Ah. Oh. I'm just exhaling because how does that feel? It feels pretty good, right? Nice, safe place to be. Well, we can create boundaries to help with that in most circumstances. Then in other circumstances, it's up to us, you know, as to how we react to the input. So we have a choice. We have a choice to say, you know what? I don't have to live by what I feel because feelings are fickle. And I don't have to live according to my circumstances because, again, this too shall pass. And I don't have to live by what others think because that doesn't really matter in the long run. And lastly, be aware of what you're listening to on the radio and, more importantly, on television, too, because that will help with that create, negating those negatives and staying more in, the, in pursuing the positives. Because I heard someone say years ago that television tells our vision. Hmm, that's something to think about, right? So be aware of your thoughts and words and others' thoughts and words and what you take in. So in order to negate the negatives, take an inventory and be more intentional to choose wisely. Okay, we're on the K. Know your why. Love this one too. So I want to start with a question here, and this is just for you to ponder. I'm not going to take a, a poll here of those that are listening. But have you ever wondered how we can explain why some people and or companies have huge success and why others may keep trying all the so-called right techniques and never experience success? Why, for instance, let's use Apple, because everybody's so familiar with Apple and has probably at least one product, I would say. You know, why is Apple so innovative? 
um, or why are people in general great leaders like Martin Luther King or other people um, that we look up to or what makes successful innovators stand out? Where does that all stem from and what's the core of that? Well, there is a commonality and pattern that all great people and leaders have in common. And I love this teaching on this um, principle by Simon Sinek, um, who does a phenomenal TED talk called Start With Why. And basically what he says is that people think, act, and communicate the exact same way. The people that are the top achievers, the innovators, the successors, the successful people. They all think, act, and communicate the exact same way. And the funny thing is, that's the, that way that they do is the opposite of everyone else. So would you like to know how that is that they think? Well, they start with why. They start with their purpose. That's the motivation. They start with their cause and what they believe. Then they go to the how, the process, the specific actions taken to realize the why, and then the what, the result. Why, what do you do? The result of the why, the proof. So it's the starting with the motivation, the process, and then ending with the what, the product. Because everybody knows what they do, right? We all know 100% of what we do. Some know how, the process or the technique, but very few know the why, why they do what they do. I want you to really focus on that today, the purpose, the cause, the belief of why you do what you do. So most work from the outside in, if you're looking at this circle, they start with what, how, and why in conversations. And they know what they are doing versus their why tends to be a little bit fuzzy. So they're not coming from that place of certainty. Where dynamic leaders and companies work from the inside out, they begin with their why. So here's an example. This just happened to me this fall. I was asked to participate at an entrepreneurial event in New York City, and I was speaking with different entrepreneurs coming through the doors, and um, you know, I was asking them what they do, and their responses were very similar. You know. I'm a realtor and I own a marketing company or I'm in IT or a, I'm a health coach or something along those lines. And that's how most people communicate. They just say what they do. Think about when someone asks you, what do you do? We usually say what we do. We might say how we do it differently. And then we expect others to behave a certain way or to get inspired, like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to hear more. So I began in this situation in New York City to challenge each person that came to my station to begin their why, to begin with their why, and the results were off the charts. I could not believe once we were in that conversation and I was asking them more questions about why they do what they do, that they stood taller, their heads like were held up and they were coming from such a great place of positivity and above all purpose. One individual was actually um, in real estate uh, in the city and trying to create that niche and stand out. So he shared this, he said, I'm gonna paraphrase, but he's like, I'm a realtor and I try to help people choose their home and make it a great experience. Okay, are you impacted? Mm, not so much. So after a few minutes of dialogue and interviewing him and really getting to the core of why he does what he does, I made a few suggestions. And he was so excited and began writing his so-called 30 second commercial, which then went something like this. I help people with one of the most important decisions in their life, finding the perfect place for them to create a lifestyle they desire and an environment for them to flourish. I help people find their dream house. I'm a realtor for such and such. I just got chills. Can you feel the difference? Starting with your why is so important because it brings your purpose to the front. It's reversing the order of the information. And a key principle in this 
is that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And that is why it's so important to know your why, your purpose, your cause for doing what you are doing. So I'm going to share from my heart in getting um, you to know me a little better what my why is. My why, I believe that everyone is uniquely and wonderfully made and they deserve to walk fully in their purpose. I also believe that each person's story can impact someone to be the best version of themselves. My why is to encourage others to stand in their power, discover their voice, and share their story with ease, eloquence, and excellence so they can serve and elevate others for positive change. So that's my why. And that is, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit about what connects me to others. It's about connecting others to your heart and your purpose and your passion. That is why I am a nonna, see my little five little grandchildren, a wife, a speaker, a radio show host, a presentation stylist in helping people be and stand in their power, and also an author. Because my why is to encourage people to be the best version of themselves. Remember, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. The goal is not to do business with everyone who needs it, to needs, who needs what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe. So I ask you, what is your why? What is that one driving force that will keep you going even when times get tough? What gets you so excited that nothing will stop you? What makes you unique? And how can you impact others that will make a positive change? When your why is big enough, you will find your how. Knowing our why is bigger than anything else we do. It's our motivation, our driving force for waking up. It's our purpose, our passion, and our unique design. So how do we make that shift? I love this uh, little um, graphic here. Shift happens <laughs> and you are the key to change. Well, again, this webinar was more of a, um, a glimpse or just a teaser of some of the things that I think are important to making that shift. Training your brain. We went over a little bit of each of these. Honing your habits, inspecting your intentions, negate the negatives, and knowing your why. But I'm offering a think tank series, which starts next Thursday, um, which is April the 5th. And um, we are doing this for five weeks. So we're going to really focus on each of these um, areas, on the, the actual think uh, program. So I invite you to participate in this. I know there's going to be so many great tips that we're going to explore. And then at the end of each, I will be giving you um, tips and kind of like some action steps to do as well. So again, it's going to start Thursday, April the 5th at 3 p.m. and it's going to run for five weeks. So and Thursdays as well. And it will be recorded if you want to participate and are not able to actually um, be on the calls at 3 p.m. The greatest thing is the cost is only $95. I tried to make this very, very affordable. It's less than $20 a session. And then another cool thing is if you share this with three people and they say, yes, I want to be a part of it, yours is free. So that's another way that you can um, actually be on it with friends and have that accountability as well. So again, the Think Tank series starts April the 5th for five weeks on Thursdays at 3 p.m. and it will be recorded. The cost is only $95. To register, you can email me today at aj at angelajoe.com. In the subject line, you can put think tank series and let me know you're in and um, 
you know, I will send you the link, but the link is also here as well so that you can copy it and um, I will send it in my follow-up email as well. So I hope you learned, um, you know, some great nuggets from this webinar today on thinking your way into success. And I'm so grateful that you joined me today and thank you all for participating and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and a wonderful holiday weekend as well. So again, thank you and I will send the follow-up link and recording um, to all of you to share and pass along. Make today amazing. Bye everyone.